Welcome to Women Kicking Glass, the only radio show on OC Talk Radio dedicated to empowering women to be the best leaders they can be in any endeavor they choose. Patty Grimm is our host and interviews top women in a variety of fields to help women grow, learn, and lean in together. Patty has over 25 years of experience in primarily male-dominated fields in senior-level management positions. Patty is the owner of Advantage Training Limited, an organizational leadership team training company. She recently released her new book for women called Quiet Women Never Changed History. Be strong, stand out, and stand up. With the subtitle, Let's Go Kick Some Glass. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. we got some real glass kickers in the house today. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Patty. Hey, thanks, Paul. We've got a great guest today. I'm really excited to have her here. She's just an amazing woman, uh, amazing businesswoman, um, amazing person, and also a, a good friend. We were having dinner last night, our husbands and I. We had a wonderful dinner last night, so it was a lot of fun. So uh, I want to introduce you. I'm going to read a little bit of her bio uh, and also do a personal testimonial of her, how wonderful she is. Andrea St- Stidick roth how I always mess that up a little bit. She is Chief Blitzmaster, President and Founder of a company called Blitzmasters, which helps companies uh, inspire organizations to change, maximize sales, and increase bottom line results. I mean, she really delivers. Her business savvy, uh, and she brings out the best in helping salespeople to bring out their best and inspire them. She's a successful entrepreneur, author, frequent media guest, sales trainer, and is in high demand as a workshop speaker and leader. Uh, I actually, when I worked for Microsoft, I ran our worldwide partner. Partner conference, which is a big, huge conference with fifteen to eighteen thousand people, and I met Andrea and hired her to lead one of our breakout sessions. And her sessions had standing ovations, standing room only. Does an amazing job, and she has this fun title called "Chocolate is Not for Breakfast Anymore," right. if I remember right. <laughs> yes, she's also written four books. She's been a featured author in the Huffington Post. She's been on a number of radio and TV shows, and she has a great uh, channel you can watch on YouTube. It's a partnership with Microsoft and HP called Coffee Coaching. So you can get some tips from her directly. She founded this company called Blitzmasters, and it's a -a one-of-a-kind sales program where you actually walk out with tangible business results. At the end of the session, she'll be able to tell you how many, or she and her company, how many sales leads people got and the dollar value of those. So it has a real bottom line impact to that. So she's a wonderful person. And before starting Blitzmaster, she was in a variety of sales positions with a lot of a number of different organizations. So thanks, Andrea, for joining me today. You bet. Thanks for having me. Great. So you started out your career in sales. Yes. Talk, talk a little bit about your career in sales. I don't know how far back you want me to go. I was just saying to my husband on the way here, I thought, you know, back, back when I was a little girl, I was probably 12. Uh, I had hamsters, and when they had babies, I would get a phone book, and I would call the local pet stores and sell <laughs> the babies at 12 years old. So there's something uh, in the genes, I guess. Um, have always done sales, uh, and about... Oh, I guess it's probably, what, 25, 20, 25 years ago now, um, I sold voicemail right out of college, uh, back in the day when people didn't know what voicemail was. I was going to say 25 years ago we had voicemail? Yeah, yeah, it was almost 25 (laughs) years. Yeah, and uh, so when I first started in that job, and I would, you know, I would call and and do my cold calling, and the receptionist would answer the phone, and I'd say, you know, I'd like to talk to the, you know, your sales, sales manager or the person in charge of, you know, voicemail, and she's like, what's voicemail? And I would explain it. Well, you know, you leave a message in in a recording. Oh, we don't need that. We use pink slips. So, you know, this is... (laughs) The the little pink slips where you would write out who the call was from. Who the call was from. And and so, you know, back then, it it was a paradigm shift. You had to sort of educate people on why voicemail was better than writing a note. And then, in addition to that, you had to then get them to buy your product and not the competition. Right. So have always done sales then uh, from the voicemail went into phone sales uh, did some data cabling sales mm-hmm. management um, it's just it's just in my blood I love people yeah and uh, so it was just sort of a natural fit. I think I think a lot of people, even though I think it's changed a lot, in the old days people used to think about salespeople and they thought of the typical salesman, like a car salesman with the the you know white belt or the white shoes, or they they, yeah. they had a misperception of what sales is. From yeah. your perspective, what what is sales really? 
Well, it's really solving a problem for yeah. um, a company or for a person or, you know, now nowadays sort of the way we talk about it is you really want to create a business outcome. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is when you're having that first conversation with a prospect and you want to get some time with them, you're not talking about your widget that you're selling. You're talking about a problem that they're likely having that you can solve. Right. And uh, that's really what it's about. It's it's about solving problems. And in these programs that we run, these these workshops, you know, we find that salespeople are very hesitant to cold call, and a lot of it is, you know, they're afraid of rejection and things like mm-hmm. that. And mm-hmm. and I said, you know, what if you were calling to tell the person they won the lottery? You know, would you feel strange about that? And well, no, and because they think, <laughs> oh, but I'm I'm interrupting their day. I'm like, yeah, but you have something valuable to offer. You yeah. should be excited. You should say, hey, it, you know, it's your lucky day. I'm calling you today. Right. And, you know, you have to kind of change the way you think about it, that you're not interrupting someone's day, that you're providing a valuable service, something that's going to help them. And when you sort of change the way you think about mm-hmm. it, then you're more likely to, to kind of do that behavior that's going to help drive drive the sales. So I think if we thought about sales as being trying to help a customer solve a problem, you're trying to alleviate a business pain, Mm -hmm. and you're trying to help them with your product or solution, and you're educating them uh, and providing them a service that's going to help make their life easier. Right. So a lot of women, uh, why why should a woman go into sales? I mean, what what did it teach you, or um, why would a woman go into sales? Well, I, for me, it was all about the money, girlfriend. I mean, you know, I was like, I know that, you know, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, but I'm I'm telling you, there are lots of salespeople that make a whole lot more money than doctors and lawyers, and yep. you don't have to have an advanced degree. You don't even need a college degree. Right. You just need to have, uh, I'd say, a high a high emotional intelligence, you right. know, the gift of gab. you got to love people. You also have to be a good listener. But for me, I, uh, it's just been a, a, a fantastic career, something that sort of chose me. I didn't really choose it. I kind of, you know, fell into it. But, um, you know, just that independence, you know, was very appealing. You know, sales is the one career that is as close to having your own business as any as anything else um because you even if yeah even if you work for another company you still have your book of business that that you're running and that you're responsible right. for so there's this autonomy and independence and the exciting thing of uh, i'm paid based on my effort and mm-hmm. there, there's you know and if you're competitive that that brings out the competitive nature too so yeah. lots of reasons to get into sales yeah yeah and i really i like the, your approach to that so as a woman in sales, like you said, you've been in it a while, what were some of the biggest challenges you had to overcome, and how did you overcome those? Well, one of the the biggest challenges I overcame actually didn't have as much to do with, with being a woman as just uh, getting a little ahead of myself, uh, and I actually went into debt quite a bit one, one year, and was a salesperson, and found myself, you know, I'd just gotten ahead of myself, found myself in some, some pretty big debt. And so I went in to one of those debt consolidation companies and said, right. okay, I need a plan to, to get out of debt. So they put me on a six-year plan. And I thought, I don't want to take six years to pay this off. What what else could I do to make this happen sooner? And as a salesperson, what's really cool about, you know, that, that job is if, if you can sell, you can sell anything. You can learn any product, any service mm-hmm. if you're mm-hmm. a good salesperson. And so I thought, well, instead of waiting six years to pay this debt off, why don't I just get a better job that pays more. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I went from being a salesperson to a regional sales manager. And instead of paying off that debt in six years, I paid it off in six months. Wow. And so that, that's the power I think of being in sales and being in control Mm -hmm. of your income and being able to sort of make that transition instead of just sitting back and say, Oh, woe is me. It's going to take six years. I thought, no, I'll just, I'll get another job and I'll, and I'll get it paid off sooner. Yeah, and that's an example of how if you are working for a company in sales, you may not be ready to start your own business, but if you're working for a company in sales, how you can control your own destiny, you right. can control your finances, you control who you call on when, what you do, you really are in control of your own destiny. So it is kind of like having your own business. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was one of the things I really enjoyed about it. And, and then it was also a steady paycheck. Yeah. So And benefits. You know, so you had all of that, plus you had the autonomy of what felt like running your own business. Yeah, so how did you make this leap of leaving that career you were very successful in to starting your own company called Blitzmasters? So at the time, I was a regional sales manager for a data cabling company, and I would run these Blitz days, and I would get the salespeople on the phone, you know, making calls, setting up appointments, filling the pipeline, and... 
I would get the vendors involved. We'd have prizes, and we'd have a contest. And it would just be this really fun day. Right. And I'm not even thinking about how this impacts the bottom line. I just know this is a necessary evil. Salespeople hate it, but they've got to do it. They've got to, you know, fill the pipeline. And I was in um, Bothell, Washington, and my boss calls from Austin, Texas one day, and he said, what is going on in the Northwest? Your numbers are <laughs> off the charts. Like, what are what's happening? What are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, I'm running these blitz days. And so I kind of explained it. And he said, well, keep up the good work. I can see the results in the bottom line. This is fantastic. And I hung up the phone and thought, why would I keep up the good work for this guy? (laughs) This could be a business. I am on to something. And so without much uh, more thought, I picked up the phone and called my fiancé at the time, my husband now. So thankfully, he married me after the news because I said, guess what? I quit my job today. I'm going to do this blitz thing full time. And and he said, you can't quit your job. We're getting married. We're buying a house. Are you out of your mind? And I said, this is a really good idea. Any company that has to set appointments and fill the pipeline needs this training. I can feel it in my bones. This this is an awesome idea. Trust me. Trust me. (laughs) So 15 years later, he's semi-retired thanks to Blitzmaster. So he's like, now he's like, that was a pretty good idea you had, honey. (laughs) So that was your inspiration for starting starting the company. It was just, why am I doing this for somebody else? Right. And I know there are a lot of women out there, a lot of listeners who are working for corporations right now and think they have this idea. And they, they want to start their own business. They want to have their own independence. Um, what advice would you give to somebody who's kind of in that stage where you were when you said, I quit my job, honey? Yeah. Well, I think it's great if you're able to sort of prove a concept when you work for someone else. Right. Um, that was what I did with the Blitz days. You know, what is it that you do that's unique, that's special? a program, a project, something that could scale. Right. So it, it's great to be able to test it out while you're working for someone else to, to prove that you're onto something right. before you then quit and, and start your own gig. Yeah, because I know for me, I've done this twice, right? Mm-hmm. So I was a VP for First Interstate Bank. I was vice president of People and Customer Excellence, a job they created for me to help tr- transform the bank. Uh, and when that job was over and i looked at my EV, my executive vice president and he says what job do you want you can have anyone you want i said none of the above wow i said i'd really like to would you hire me back to do these leadership development courses for the senior leaders and all the leaders within the bank would you hire me back if i chose to leave he said oh absolutely wow so i gave six months notice i hired my replacement i trained my replacement wow. and i left the security of this nice bank and started my own company, Advantage Training, which is what I have now. Mm-hmm. Did it a second time after I left Microsoft after 15 years. I looked around and I looked at the jobs available and said, there's, just, there's nothing else I want to do. I had done so much. So I founded the com- refounded the company. Yeah. You know, The one advice I would say is I kept the company open the whole time. Yeah, Even when good. I was at Microsoft for 15 years, I paid my corporate taxes every year. I did everything to keep the business open. That's smart. Yeah. 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 Good. So... How does how does Blitzmaster solve a problem for your customers or your clients? Talk about Blitzmaster. So we solve a, a couple of problems. One is the, uh, I guess, hesitancy of the salespeople to pick up the phone and, and call someone and set up an appointment and start the sales right. process. Salespeople are pretty good. Once they have the meeting, they can uh, do the discovery interview. They right. can follow up. They can even close the business. But the, the part they struggle with is picking up the phone and calling a complete stranger. And once they understand how to get past the gatekeeper, how to handle objections, Mm -hmm. how to get voicemail returned, once they know all that, it becomes easier, and then they're able to do it. So uh, the problem we solve is, is that that pipeline, getting enough business coming in the the top of the funnel, if you will, to, Mm -hmm. to keep sales steady. And, um, you know, we make it fun. It's, it's a high-energy, fun event. So I always sort of compare the, this concept of, uh, of cold calling and, and what we do. Like, Blitzmasters is to cold calling what – I don't know if your mom ever did this for you, but when I was little and I, and I had to take medicine, she would put the pill in a teaspoon and put Hershey's chocolate syrup in oh, my teaspoon. mom didn't do that. Yeah, and it was just like, okay, that was a way to – you do it with animals, too. You give yeah, them, like, do, like peanut butter or something, yeah. but it was like the way to get them to take yeah. the medicine. And so that that's what, you know, at Blitzmasters we do. We create this fun environment so that salespeople will actually want to do this, you know, necessary activity that they don't always enjoy right. of um, making those calls and filling up the pipeline. 
Yeah, and so from a, for people who aren't familiar with sales, a lot of times we talk about a pipeline, and so mm-hmm. you think about the fact that you've got a quota, right. your, your boss or somebody or your company, you've got a number you need to achieve, mm-hmm. whatever number that is, and you need to get more opportunities, more potential clients in the top of the sales funnel, right. your pipeline, so that something comes out at the end. Right. right. And sometimes it's two times your amount or three times your amount from that perspective, but you're helping really fill that funnel. Yes. And how do you make it fun? Oh, we've got... They're a blast. I mean, I've been to her brother Carl, one of his sessions, and they're just a blast. Yeah. So we have party horns. We have candy. We've got some fun videos. Um, And the Blitzmasters that I have are all really entertaining. Fun, Fun people, great coaches. So... Uh, and lots of interaction. You know, we've, we've, we're throwing a football around the room. We're practicing, you know, how to uh, overcome those objections or how to get those voicemails returned. we got some party horns. It sounds really hokey, and at first we get some eyes rolling, you know. Yeah, but you get some senior salespeople. Sales oh, are you kidding me? Really? Oh, I have come to, on. Are you I have serious? To a horn. And, you know, by the end of the day, they're toot-toot. You know, every time they get an appointment, they're excited. And so, and, and you know, with the prizes, and there's that competitive you know, spirit, and we've right. got an online tool to track the results. So there's lots, and it makes the day go really fast. I mean, you you sit down at eight in the morning to, to start the training. Next thing you know, it's four o'clock, and you've got you know five or six new appointments with customers where you couldn't get arrested before. And right, so yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. So what makes your training different? I think it's the uh, application of the techniques the same day. You know, so often, to, to call what we do sales training really underestimates yeah. what it is. I've, I've, I've tried to figure out what to call some of these kind of things, because it's not really training, because really the training is only a short piece of That's it. That's part of it, right. But then they go do it. Yeah. So it's really the way that I would like to describe this is it's a transformational prospecting workshop where the the two hours of it is training, gatekeepers, objections, voicemail. We work on opening scripts. But the rest of the day, the reps are putting that into practice. They're calling real prospects. They're setting up real appointments. They're finding actual business. So it's more likely to stick with them versus when you go to a sales training event or a seminar and maybe they learn some material and you don't know if they're ever going to use it again and they get get their notebook and it goes up on a shelf and it right. collects dust. With us, you're doing it the same day. We're tracking the results in real time. We give a report back to the client and then they can track their return on investment. And it's often 40 times what they paid for us to come in. Right. Right, and it's something that they can then continue on right. and, and do on a regular basis. Yes. So you must do a couple things that a lot of salespeople, one, they're afraid to make do the cold calls in the first place. Yeah. So this makes it fun and gets them to do it and encourages them to do it. Also, there's a whole thing around getting past the gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. So what are a couple of little techniques maybe you could share about gatekeepers or objections or yeah just some little tip you could give so um and and really this works for anybody who's an entrepreneur i mean right you, you know you're, if, you're, if you have your own business you're yeah, you got to do this right so a couple tips around gatekeepers uh call before 8 a.m and after 5 p.m because gatekeepers okay. are gone Decision makers are typically in the office, and so they will often re- they will often answer the phone, and you've got them directly without having to go through a gatekeeper. So that's one idea. The other is when the gatekeeper answers the phone, instead of asking for, um, you know, the the quote unquote buyer that you're looking for, you ask for the sales department, or you ask for HR. Or, okay. or accounting, or the help the help desk, because if if they know you're a salesperson, you're going to get screened. That's the, yeah, the gatekeeper's job is to shuffle. not let you in. Yeah. You know, you are not getting in here. But if you call and you ask for sales, of course they're going to transfer you to sales. They're not going to say what's this about. You know, they'll transfer you to sales. And then the reason I like being transferred to sales is that they're they're really helpful. Then you ask the salesperson, "This is who I am. This is what I do." Who should I talk to in the in your company? And the salespeople will likely transfer you. Right. And now the decision maker sees a call coming in. It's not from the front desk. It's an it's from inside the organization. So they'll take the call. Interesting. So that was call before eight, eight and after five and after five. Okay. So that that's actually good uh, good advice because then if you're trying to balance your time, you can use between nine o'clock say and four o'clock to make your actual follow up calls or meetings or right. confirmations and stuff. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And it's funny, they're called gatekeepers for a reason. Yes. Right? Just visually think of a gate. A gate. And you're trying to get through that gate. And so if you ask for sales or HR, I love the idea that now the, co- the call looks like it's coming internal and you've got a more of a friendly yes. way of dealing with it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. Good. So how do you, what do you do? So typical objections when you do get through to the 
business decision maker, um, and they say, I don't have time, I don't have the money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't have time or I'm too busy. Usually the, a great response is to say, great, I don't want to take your time now. What I'd like to do is schedule a, a half-hour call next Tuesday at 2.15. You know, how does that work for you? Yeah, and you always ask for, you don't say what time works for you. No, no. You say Tuesday at 2.15. Very specific. And, you know, some salespeople have been trained to say, you know, how's Tuesday morning or Thursday afternoon? That's better than leaving it totally open, but that's still not not perfect. What you want to do is say, how's Tuesday at 2.15? The more specific, the better. One, 2.15 is going to get their attention. Because it's not 2 or 2.30. Exactly. Who who asks for 2.15? Unless you've been through a Blitzmasters course, who asks for, <laughs> for 2.15? So it sort of implies it's going to be a short meeting. Right. So they're more likely to take it. It also implies you're busy. You're like a doctor. You have to do appointments every right. 15 minutes. So um, it also makes it easier for the prospect to look at their calendar uh, Tuesday at 2.15. If that doesn't work for them, now the conversation is when you should meet, not if you should meet. It just becomes, right. well, actually, Tuesday at 2.15 doesn't work for me. Then you could say, okay, what's better for you but okay. you want to be the person that throws out the first time right because you're in control of your schedule right okay awesome yeah. awesome all right we're going to take a quick commercial break and when we come back we're going to continue talking with andrea about Blitzmasters, an amazing program and it gets the results that you're looking for so we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back when it comes to pioneers in their respective industries we all know the apples starbucks and trader joe's of the world In the realm of recruiting, Decision Toolbox is the industry's best-kept secret. With 90% of their business from referrals and repeat customers, for over 20 years, Decision Toolbox's U.S.-based team of recruiters, sourcers, professional writers, quality personnel, and tech support has perfected a Six Sigma approach to talent management. No matter the size of the project, Decision Toolbox delivers incredible results. A cost per hire less than half of what contingency firms charge. With the winning candidate presented in an average of 14 days. All with a 12-month candidate warranty. With results like that, Decision Toolbox won't be a secret for long. Visit us at www.dtoolbox.com for more information. Back to Patty and her guest. Yeah, I'm here with Andrea. She's founder, president, and chief Blitzmaster. Her company is called Blitzmasters with an S. So who is your ideal client? We do a lot in the uh, the channels. So with the IT channel, folks like uh, you know HP, um, you know Oracle, Cisco, some of the the big IT channels. And and you know what I mean by channel for those who who aren't in the channel, you have a company like HP who goes to market through partners. Right. And th- those partners are, are VARs, value added resellers, who sell HP products and services to an end user. And the reason that this has worked so well in this channel uh, sort of environment is that these large IT companies have something called MDF, Market Development Funds, Mm -hmm. that they give to their partners on a quarterly basis. And often, the partners have to spend it or lose it type of a thing. Right. And um, what these uh, IT vendors are looking for uh, is a good return on the investment mm-hmm. of those market development funds. And so what they found with Blitzmasters is that they are able to get that that ROI. They're able to track it, unlike other events like golf tournaments and happy hours and, you know, other sort of marketing where you don't really know. You don't know. What what you're getting, you know, in terms of revenue. So uh, that has been great. And, and by nature of the channel, I've been able to create what I call ambassadors, or champions mm-hmm. that will, they're, they're partner business managers that will say, you know, hey, this is a great way for my partners to spend their market development funds. And so those uh, partner business managers will go to their partners and say, I'd like to recommend Blitzmasters, mm-hmm. you know, as something that we do this quarter with your MDF. So it's almost like having my own free sales force. You know, those folks are out there. But right. but it's great for them, makes them look good to the partner, mm-hmm. makes helps them hit their number, helps the partner hit their number. It's just sort of a, a win win for everybody. Yeah, because in sales, it really is a, a numbers game. Yes. Right? You're trying to get a certain number. You're trying to get a pipeline of a certain number. And you're trying to get a return on your investment. Right. Which is a number. Right? Yes. So you're trying to find a way to do that and it's a way to actually show value versus sending them to some other kind of training where you hope they use the skills like we talked about. Right. So you have a couple different kinds of Blitz Masters. You started out traditionally with the in-fa- in-person right. classroom experience. Um, you can just describe that a little bit, but now you've actually moved to a new platform as well. 
well. Yeah. So the Blitz experience is sort of what kicked it all off 15 years ago when I started the business. And that's a full day on site, more traditional classroom type of setting with the training and, and for two hours and then actually four hours of dialing with the Blitz Master on site that circulates in coaches and mm-hmm. so on. And we mm-hmm. track those results. And then several years ago, one of my clients came to me and said, you know, we... We have some partners that we would like to run through, you know, Blitzmasters, but they don't have enough MDF to cover the full day on site. Could you do something virtually? Right. And so it was a customer that came to me and said, will you create this program? And I said, sure, why not? So we basically just said, it's the same content. We'll just deliver it in a half-day format over the web, and mm-hmm. we'll do sort of a 90-minute training sort of webinar presentation. Then there's a two-hour dialing session, so they still go and dial. We still track the results. Right. They come back in for um, a half hour and do a wrap-up. So we call that the Blitz 2.0, okay. and that's for, for one company or one partner at a time. And then the, the one of the best things that I, that I did was create the National Blitz, because it used to be that we could only work with one company at a time right? because we didn't have the technology to work with, with multiple companies. And then I uh, create, uh, had a web developer create an online tracking tool, and now all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, we could have literally dozens of companies, thousands of people, all blitzing at the same time all across the country. So that created the National Blitz. And so we've got clients that use that on a quarterly basis, and okay. they'll have literally hundreds of people that are all you know dialing into the webinar to get that 90 minutes of sales skills training. Training. Then they'll go dial for three hours, and each partner gets their own dashboard so they can kind of track right. those results. And then they'll come back in for a thirty day or thirty day, thirty minute. That's a long program. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long program. Yeah, that's a long, thirty minute wrap up, and um, and so that's something some of the the our vendor uh, clients will do as a way to go to market with multiple partners all at the same time. Uh, great way to build a lot of pipeline with a lot of different. Uh, partners, a lot of different companies. And like you said, some companies do that on a quarterly basis. They may have new people or people kind of lose the motivation. So it's kind of a jump start. Um, I know in the old days when we used to do some sales stuff, we would also have, have people on the phone. We'd make it fun. We'd have pizza. Yeah. We'd have, you know, bells to ring. Right. Somebody may, may, got an appointment. So you make it fun and interesting. But what's really great is that they, you apply it immediately. Right. So you're immediately able to get successes or have people talk about their challenges. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's team building and folks, everybody learns from everybody else. And, you know, we always have those veterans that think they're all that in a bag of chips and oh, have yeah. <laughs> nothing new to learn. And they're looking at their watch and they're rolling their eyes. And then next thing you know, you know, they're embracing it. They're leaning forward. And our Blitzmasters are really good at empowering those veteran reps as leaders right. for the day to say, hey, we recognize you have a lot of experience. What do you think about, you know, gatekeepers? How, how would you handle this objection? And then right. now you're, you're bringing them into that conversation and uh, it, it really makes for a great team building type yeah. of event. I remember I was doing a uh, sales training for a, a technology company, large technology company, and the, the reps were from all over. So they were taking, actually, they were going to take their inside customer service people and train them to be salespeople. Okay. So they sent them to this three-day sales course that we were doing for like 250 people in wow. all different rooms. But I remember this one guy I'll never forget. And we, we, he was a veteran. And we, yeah. So we said brainstorming. Let's brainstorm the worst objection you've ever had, right? And this veteran out of New York said he walked into a store and the, and the owner of the shop said, I don't like you get out of my store i have a gun oh. <laughs> we don't have a flashcard for that i don't know how you handle that objection you just turn around and go the other you way just turn around and go the other wow. way and go to the next door because that's the other thing is you always just need to keep going and keep right. going and keep going yeah so what are some of the policies and procedures as a small business owner that you've put in place that maybe somebody who owns their own business or is thinking about their own business should really think about seriously before they take that leap or they're looking to improve their business yeah, I had to kind of learn the hard way, and um, you know, it, it depends on the business model. But for me, one of the things that I learned early on, um, I had a blitz schedule. This is back in the day when I did blitzes myself before I had blitz masters that were doing the program. So I had a blitz set up in, um, I think it was in Kent, Washington, and literally the night before, the guy emails and cancels. And meanwhile, I've held that date on my calendar. That's like inventory. You know, that, that's all I have to sell is the the date on the calendar. It's like the way air, airlines work. They have a seat on a plane. And, you know, you pay for that in advance if you want them to hold that seat. Well, I hadn't figured out the whole payment up front thing yet. This is how I learned that. Right. And um, he ended up, they did it an, another day. So I didn't lose the, the account altogether. But that was a day out of my inventory that I could have sold to someone else. And I, you know, I lost that. So 
what uh, I recommend is if there's if there's any way you can get if if not payment in full at least partial payment mm-hmm. up front. Mm-hmm. It really helps to hold the you know feet to the fire if you will. So it, it, the client then has some skin in the game. That right. it's harder for them to walk away. So I recommend um, you know getting the payment up front for us. It's paying for a, a, a date you know on the calendar. It means we're not going to sell that date to anyone else. And then also um, I implemented rescheduling fees and cancellation fees. Right. So those are all the things that can happen that can really mess up your schedule and you know and then and then what's nice about having some of those policies is that you can decide if you want to waive that like so for some of our bigger customers you know if they reschedule we might say well you know normally we charge a a thousand dollar fee for that but because you're such a great customer you know yeah we're gonna waive it this time you know so you get some goodwill and you know they realize okay this you know they you really value, value our business and so, so that's a lot of it is uh, is the the, pay, the payment structure, figuring that out, mm-hmm. and if there's a way, you got to figure out what it is that you can sell to get get that deposit or get that payment up front. Yeah. So you ask. Typically, uh, some people may ask for fifty percent up front. If you can get it all, that's great. Mm-hmm. But definitely have those cancellation policies of saying if you cancel the date or if you reschedule, there's a certain right. cost to that. Yeah, and maybe you even offer a discount for payment in full up front. Right. Right. You know, give them. Uh, incentivize them or you know to do that up front yeah and they're going to save a little money yeah to do it that way so what are some of the gotchas you've learned along the way well that that one that i actually that i just described with the whole canceling the you know the the day before was um was tough and you know sometimes i'll say you know as a woman getting on my soapbox (laughs) <laughs> sometimes you know and you can never say this just to customers when you're dealing with a man but sometimes you you get into these like I've had to find myself defending my policies of payment up front and rescheduling and cancellation and I've even it's even happened where somebody signed a contract that very clearly and outlines the, and the, and the policy. our policy right and then they'll email and say well okay we're ready to pick our date and I say, well, yeah, I'm, as soon as I get your payment, we'll go ahead and get that date on the account. Payment? Well, what do you mean? You haven't even, we haven't done anything yet. What do, we, what do you mean, payment up front? You know, I'm like, well, it's at 3B on the contract that you signed, you know. <laughs> and then you have to sort of, you get into this kind of argument about having to now justify. It's like you signed it. And, and you know, so when a man's doing that, I always want to say, if I were a man, would we be having this conversation? <laughs> I don't ever go there, but there's this part of me that just thinks that, you know. And it's that thought bubble over your yes. head that you hope never comes out of your mouth. Yes. <laughs> it truly is that thought bubble. Yeah. And my husband is so good at, at times when I'm, like an email will come in and I'm having to have this conversation and he'll be like, okay, you don't need to defend this. It, it, you know, this is what this is what the contract says. This is what they agreed to. Because I find myself ha- like, well, this is why we do this because this, this is what can happen. And so then we have to do it this way. And he's like, no, you don't have to do that. You just... Here's the agreement. This is what you signed. Yeah, and that, that those, those are the rules of the game. You know. Yeah, yeah. We've had several attorneys on the on the that have been on the show. Different attorneys looking at different things, and that's always you know read the contract, read the contract, yeah. read the contract. Yeah, before you sign it. It's yeah. not it's not friendness. It's business. You know. Say that again. It's not friendness. It's business. It's business. And you know, as as women, I, we are so concerned about being liked that yeah. we will forfeit everything else because we just want people to like us and you have to really just kind of stand up for yourself to be able to Mm -hmm. you know have that confidence and enforce you know the 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 contract and you know one of the other things that i that i found found and this was a lesson that i was happy to learn is that a lot of times customers will ask for a better price not necessarily because they expect it but they're just that's the game. You that, know, that's tra- they're trained to do They're it. trained to do that. That's what they have to do for their company. They have to get the right. best price. But just because you say no doesn't mean they're not going to do business with you. And okay. in fact, I've had people come back and say, you know, I really respect... The, I really respect you for that. You know, I had to ask for a discount. Everybody always wants to feel like they're getting something. Right. But what I always come back with is, is saying, you, you know, the value of what we provide is is there we feel like this is a fair price and we'd really like to have your business but you know if i'm going to discount what does that mean you don't want the books ahead of time right you don't want the tracking tool because clearly you don't want me to drop the price and give you all the same benefits right right and would Just, you and turn that around and say now if you if i if you were in my shoes would you be right. giving do you sell your products for free yeah 
Yeah. And, and is somebody, there a cost for your products? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a cost for my products. Yeah. And I actually learned that lesson from a good friend of mine who's in real estate. She said that uh, sometimes what happens with her is maybe a friend will come to her and say, oh, you know, we'd love you to list our house and, and you know, you'll give me a break on your commission, right? And she'll come back and say, well, okay, if you'd like me to do that, then do you want me to not do flyers? Do you want me to not put it on the MLS? What What part of my service... Do you not want? Do you not want to have an open house? Yes. <laughs> because it, that's what's funny is when customers, they want a better price, but they still want all the same benefits. It's like, well, no, that's not yeah. really how it works. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you really did, if you really turn it around to them and say, when you're in my shoes and you're talking to somebody about your price, do you necessarily automatically drop your price or do you take things off the table? And so yeah. just thinking, think, you know, like that person that you're dealing with and, and, Customers, especially uh, like a procurement department or a sales department, they're trained to ask for that discount. Mm-hmm. While we're going to sales and negotiation schools, they're going to supplier school, right? basically. Yes. And they need to be able to sometimes report to their manager, oh, yeah, well, it usually costs the X, yeah. but I got it for Y. Right. So then we really should do this because this is really a good deal. Yeah. Well, and the other thing you can do is also say... I'll give you that price in exchange for your commitment of X amount of work. Yeah. So, yeah. Say, say more. Yeah. So, instead of, you know, if you want to buy 10 blitzes at that price that you've just given me, we'll do that. And, oh, by the way, you're going to pay for all 10 of them up front. Then, yeah, happy yeah. to honor this, you know, this lesser price. But if you're going to order one, then that's the price. Right. And and here's the value, and this is why we charge what we do, and and oh, by the way, here are the customers that we've worked with. And, you know, you've yeah. got those testimonials and case studies and all that. Yeah. So collect those testimonials and case studies as well. So get quotes from people. When you've done a good service for someone, yes. ask them if they'd be willing to write something. If not, sometimes what you can do is say, would you mind if I wrote something and send it to you yes. and you edit it and send it back so it's in your own words. So right. you want to collect those testimonials, those kind of things, so you can use those for your future, yeah. your future marketing. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. So as a business owner... What's the difference between selling your time and selling your value? So I think a lot of folks, especially who are in consulting, uh, they think about selling their time. Maybe they have an hourly rate. And the sort of, I don't know, danger, the thing you have to look out for with that is that, you know, there's only so much time in the day. So you really limit yourself in terms of, of income. Right. So it's better if you can sell sort of a scope of work or a package and say, here, here's the, the, the price or the investment. We don't call it cost. We say investment of this particular package. And the value is all about, you know, that, that again, that outcome mm-hmm. that it's going to create for the customer. And one of the, there's a couple of fun analogies. So one is, um, it's like when the electrician, you know, comes over, you've had a, your lights are out or some, something's happened with, mm-hmm. you know, the electricity in the house and the electrician comes over, it takes him five minutes and he goes, that'll be $500, please. And you're <laughs> like, what are you talking about? It took you five minutes. Well, yeah, but it took me 20 years of, you know, studying and right. learning and becoming an electrician so that I could solve your problem in five minutes. You know, that's what you're paying for. Or like in the movie Pretty Woman, when uh, Richard <laughs> Gere is lost, you know, when I think he's near Beverly Hills, but he's in kind of a bad part of town and he pulls over over and he sees Julia Roberts and asks for directions and she's going to charge him $20 and he says you can't charge me $20 for directions and she goes I can do anything I want I ain't lost you know <laughs> so it's like it's that's the value he wanted to get out of that bad neighborhood so he was willing to pay the 20 bucks so you know that's what we sell is definitely a value sale. Mm -hmm. Uh, In fact, the other day I had a a customer, we charged $5,500 for our Blitz 2.0 program, our our half-day virtual program. And so at the end of the call, this guy says, okay, let me get this straight. There's 90 minutes of training in in a webinar. And then um, my reps go call for two hours and then they come back for 30 minutes and that's (laughs) $5,500. I go, yes, it is. And the reason is, is that it's taken me 25 years to develop a program that can be delivered in half a day. That's going to get you 40 to one on your investment. That's why it's $5,500. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's since become a customer. Well, yeah. And sometimes what I've done too, as well as when somebody says, oh my gosh, that price is too high. A lot of times I'll break it down by per person. Yes. There you go. So instead of saying it's going to cost you $10,000, for example, it's only going to cost you $3,000. 
three hundred, you know, one hundred and thirty-three dollars per person. Right. Is that worth the investment to you? Yes. Is that, is that investment worth it to your people? Right. Yeah. And because of what you do, and you measure and track the results, you can literally say there's a measurable, tangible. Right. At the end of the session, you're 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 going to have a forty to one ROI versus what you paid for me and up new opportunities. Right. And you've got better train reps. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's those are fun. Yeah. I love those. I love those kind of objections, and I've had to get my my. You know, objection handling has gotten better as I've gotten older because there, when you're a, a business owner, you do tend to take things really personally. It kind of hurts your feelings, you know. They, they, they don't like me. They don't like, it, that's what it, it is. It, they don't like me. They don't think I'm worth fifty five hundred for this, you know, program. And so you want to get defensive. And um, so I've just had to kind of come up with the diplomatic way of sort of explaining that. This, this is the value that you're getting. It's not about the time. It's not about the half day that it takes to deliver it. It's about all of the years of experience in, in writing the book and coming up with the techniques and giving you a way to apply them the same day and track them and actually get some tangible revenue from right. it. That, that's the value that you're paying for, not the time that it took me to deliver it. Right, and you're, and you're giving people tools. So you're giving them flashcards or different things they could use that they can use when they're on their own, when they're not in a Blitz Master session. Right. They can simply get in a situation where they've got a little flashcard that says, when the customer says your price is too high, yes. how do you respond? Mm-hmm. Right? And some different ways of doing that. Right. Good. So as a woman, woman business owner, what's maybe some of the funniest things that you've come across or had to overcome? Well, I've had to... So there's a couple examples. Um, one was I had a, a Fortune 500 client, and the my contact was a woman that was about my age. And I'm not kidding. Every time we would get on the phone, she'd read me her resume. She would tell me about all the awards that she'd won. And it, I, I, it was like she was competing with me. And, and I think part of it is that she she knew the amount of money her company was spending with me. And she thought, well, was she looking for a job? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but it, it was very combative. It was just... I just felt like every time we got on the phone, I did something wrong. We'd have a call with a, a partner, and then she would call me afterwards and yell at me because the partner asked a question that I answered, and she was supposed to answer it. And you were supposed and, to know that, And right? I was supposed to know that somehow. Even though the question was about Blitzmasters, somehow she was supposed to answer it instead of me. And so I, I've just about had it. I'm like, oh, this just isn't worth it. And my husband says, this is a great client. I, I think you need to give this to Carl and why don't you just have him manage it I'm like oh my gosh brilliant because it was clearly a personality thing it was woman versus woman it was that was a yes woman versus woman very competitive and right. so Carl takes over the account and boom it's magic you know not only did we continue to work with them but then he grew the account and uh, so that that was how I solved that one and then I had another customer that was a, a man about my age that uh, and he was one where you know, he signed the contract and then was all had his knickers in a twist that, you know, he <laughs> wanted a date. And I thought, well, gosh, you know, we, we haven't paid yet. As soon as we, what do you mean? You know, so that was that was one where I had to really sort of defend, you mm-hmm. know, the policy. And he was he was also very combative and, and he would get uh, he, he would it was like I was supposed to read his mind because we would have these debrief calls, you know, after his blitzes. And he would say, well, you know, your Blitzmaster should have done this or should have done that. And I'd say, oh, well, were you on the, the, the ducks in a row call that we have beforehand so that you could talk about, oh, no, I, I didn't have time to do that. Okay, well, that's where that conversation happens right. is beforehand. And he was irritated that the Blitzmaster wasn't able to read his mind, and even though he didn't want to be on the call to have that conversation. So sometimes when you, when you get customers like that, it, you just you just decide it's not a good fit. It's too much too much negative yeah. energy yep. or you just double your price. Yeah. And say, this is what it's going to take for me to put up with a customer <laughs> like that. <laughs> if he wants to do this at 25 grand, I'll take your money. But you're not going to get the same great price everybody else gets. Yeah, I, I've had situations where it just wasn't a good fit or even I was called in to do a, a proposal for a big contract with a major company here in Orange County, um, California. And I kept asking the question consistently of the leaders, what will you do to change to enable the people who are trained to do the skills they've been learned? They've right. learned. Kind of like that ducks in a row call. Mm-hmm. They weren't going to do anything. So I actually said, uh, after asking the same question three or four times not getting an answer i finally said well i appreciate your time thank you for inviting me to this big proposal meeting 
I'm not your consultant. If you'd like to speak to somebody, I can sure give you somebody who will take your money. But And I left. <laughs> wow. And they called me back and they said, I can't believe you did that. Yeah. And I'm so glad I didn't because it was such a culture mismatch, right. values mismatch. It would have They would have hired me. I would have done the training. The people would feel good for a few days. And then they'd go back to worse than, worse than ever. Right. Because now they're knowledgeable and ticked before right. they were just ticked. Exactly. <laughs> well, and I had something similar with vendor clients that will come and say, okay, we want to do, a, we want to sponsor a blitz for XYZ partner. And I'll get on the phone with the sales manager of the partner and the sales manager's not bought in, you know, they're really resisting it. And then I'll have to go back to the vendor and say, you know what, don't waste your money on this partner. They're, they're not bought in. You're not going to get a good result. Let's go find somebody else who appreciates yeah. what you're, what you're yeah. doing for them. And they always seem surprised. They're like, well, I was going to pay you to do that. It was like, no, yeah. because I know that when there's that much resistance and when they're not right. going to get on board, that it's not going to be a good result for you right. or for me. So let's just go find another partner that right. that gets it, that appreciates the investment you're making. And um, so, yeah, they, and clients appreciate that. They yeah. appreciate the honesty, I think. Yeah, yeah, being honest. So we've only got a couple minutes left. So I just wanted to, based on your experience, you were in sales, you were a sales manager, you've run your own successful business for how many years for Blitzmaster? 15. Okay, I yeah. was going to say 12 because we've been known yeah. each other for quite a while. Yeah. Um, what advice would you have for women that really want to go kick some glass? Just to really have that confidence. Don't be afraid to ask for exactly what you want. Don't apologize for what you want. Charge double what you think you're worth. I mean, I cannot you know, stress that enough. Women consistently charge way less than they should. They just they, they devalue themselves for right. whatever reason. So I want you to pick a number in your head for what you think your services are work, worth. I li- literally want you to double it. And then I want you to go out and that's your price. That That's what you ask for. And um, and you don't apologize. Don't apologize for your, your policies, for you know your programs, your price, the way that you do things, your methodology. It's, it's, it's good enough. It's probably going to be fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. I think a lot of us grew up with the idea that we're not good enough. Yes. I remember always wanting to do something better than a boy or better than somebody else and not being good enough. And so we have to get over that not good enough syndrome. Yes. Or and, that we're not perfect. Yes. And and worrying about being liked. I mean, yeah, yeah. we all want to be liked. But at the, at the end of the day, this is business and uh, you got to pay the bills and... Yeah, got to do what you got to do. So you said something very insightful before. You said it's business, not friend, friend friendness, not friendness, <laughs> friendness, friendness. Not it's business, not friendness. So yeah. that's a good, well, good way to think about right. that. Well, you've been a great guest. So how can people get in touch with you if they want to meet you or schedule a Blitzmasters or have one of your folks come in and do a Blitzmaster 2.0? How can people get in touch with you? They can simply go to blitzmasters dot com. That's blitzmasters with an S at the end, and. Uh, Go from there. Our, we've got some fun videos uh, and uh, contact information. And, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. And you can still see some of the videos on YouTube, right, on uh, the Coaching Coffee? Yeah. So it's uh, actually it's YouTube.com slash Andrea Siddig Rolf. Um, but the coffee coaching videos are part of that, uh, right. part of my channel. And those are just some quick two- and three-minute sales tips. Um, there's over 40 of them. And you've got a newsletter that comes out on a regular basis with, new- with sales tips, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So lots of great tools out there. Andrew, you've been a wonderful guest. It's great to see you and Brian, who's actually in the room with us today. So it's great to see the two of you. Uh, you split your time between Washington and Palm Springs, depending on weather. So there are those rainbirds, rain birds, not yeah. snowbirds. Yeah. Although this year in Seattle, it's been snow. It has been snowy. Yeah, <laughs> been we, snow. we like rainbirds because that's what we're getting away from. We're typically getting away from rain, not snow. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for being here. It's great having you on the show. And I just want to remind the audience, this is Patty Grimm with Women Kicking Glass. Uh, please make Email me. Uh, it's Patty Grimm at live.com. It's P A T T I E G R I M M at live.com. Uh, you can reach out to me to either find Andrea if you can't find Blitzmasters. You can reach out to me if you would like to be a guest on the show. If you have a topic for the show, this is the only show we know of that's in Orange County and probably in California that's by women for women and about issues they care about. And also, if you want to book either one of us as a speaker, you can contact us as well. So thanks and have a great day and let's go kick some glass. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Women Kicking Glass, the only radio show on OC Talk Radio dedicated to empowering women to be the best they can be. Listen each week or download the podcast at patty.grim.podbean.com. To reach out to Patty to schedule a speech webinar or to learn more about her leadership and team training, contact Patty at pattygrim at live.com. For more information about her company and her books, have a kicking day.